Hello, my name is Ricardo, and this is the complete guide for reed working. First thing we need to do is to draw on our reed a simple pattern that will help us and guide us on how to shave or sand or seal a reed to get the best results. Which means that the second most important tool we will have to work on our reeds is actually a pencil. The first will be the product we choose to use. I use the Reed Doctor Pro. Always the second place goes to our pencil. So let's get to work. First thing we will draw a line in the middle of the shoulders and in the middle of the tip. I'm doing two reads because we will do two different patterns. Then we just take a ruler and make a straight line. Same thing in the back of the reed. So when we have our lines in the vamp and the table of the reed, we will take a mouthpiece, a ligature, and just see where the breaking point is and draw a line there. So we have our mouthpiece, this is a normal mouthpiece. Doesn't really matter which mouthpiece you use, the method is the same. And then with a piece of paper, we just see where the breaking point is. Because we are working a read for our mouthpiece. Now that we have in our reeds the breaking point and we have the spine on the vamp and the half on the table, we can begin with the patterns. We will work in two different patterns that will help for different applications. First pattern goes this way. You just take your ruler and make a straight line from the half of the tip to the breaking point. So we, th we just have a triangle and a straight line that goes all the way. The triangle starts on the tip and we have the two rails and we have two corners of the reed and a section of the rail and uh, this will help for one application. The other way is very tricky, but it's very interesting. We will see the reed through a light and determine where is located the resistance point. In this particular reed, the resistance point it is it's here. So we will do the same thing. From the resistance point, and we have two different patterns, each with different applications and repercussions when the read is worked on. So, next thing is to draw this line, the breaking point, on the back of the table. The other read is from the same brand. Our spine drawn, uh, we have breaking point on the front and on the back and we have our different patterns one with the long tip and one with the short tip so um, next thing we'll do is draw a bunch of lines horizontal lines this way so we have two different patterns with a bunch of lines and on the back. So with drawn reads we have two different patterns this one on the left, this one on the right, and on the back. 
In the next video I'll show you how to correctly shape a reed to reduce its strength by even half a number. But by now I can tell you this about these patterns. When you shave a reed with this pattern you'll get a brighter sound, quicker response, easier staccato. Well in the pattern of the right if you shave a reed this way you'll get a warmer fodder sound, a more stable intonation and a longer lasting reed. For this part of the video let's suppose the reed is too hard for us to play. What we will do is take our preferred tool. I use the Reed Doctor Pro because it gives me all the functionality I need and, and start shaving only the part marked. I know many of you are thinking but you shouldn't be shaving the heart and the shoulders of the reed you should be shaving the other parts I claim otherwise here is where we have most wood in the in the reed well these places have less wood and as Mike Vaccaro says it is very easy to remove material from a reed but it is impossible to put it back so for that reason we just work on the reed on separate parts we first make sure this thing is ready and the table is ready and then only when necessary we will shave the corners of the reed same case in this one we will shave progressively through every single of these lines. Why? Because if we shave the exact same amount of wood from here to here, it means that here we may be removing 1% of the material. That same amount of material here represents, for example, a 5%. What will happen? the proportions of the reed would be violated so unless you are very sure of what you're doing you may end up with negative results always from the back and through each line and the same way in the back of the reed we have the tip secured in a flat surface and we start shaving all the way through this line and then all the way through the next and so consecutively as I mentioned earlier if you do only the pattern without this and only the pattern without this part the differences in these two patterns will be very noticeable this one will give you a brighter sound, easier staccato. This one will give you a fatter, warmer sound with more stability and intonation and longer lasting read. Why? Because the tip of the read, which is the place with the least amount of material, stays the same without any material removed. How do I know when is the right moment to shave the corners of the read and a section of the rails and the tip. The answer is actually very simple. If you cannot sustain a long note in pianissimo, it is the right moment to shave this part right here. How do I explain that? Well, it's very simple. If you are playing your long tones and you can only play them right when you play forte or mezzo forte uh, it means that this part of here has the right resistance but this part right here needs some shaving how do we do it? same way we make the lines and remove material only from here I'll show you how I do it. Look, 
I made the lines and with shaving I erased them. So doing this process on any read will make it brighter, will make the response quicker and will make the articulation softer for you. Okay, it means that you need less strength to articulate correctly. Next problem we face as saxophone players when uh, playing a reed that is not hand finished is that the table of the reed is not flat. If you have a mouthpiece of a good brand, uh, uh, the table is very likely to be flat. So uh, you need the table of the reed to be flat too. It, it sometimes happens that it comes this way or this way. Both happen. Both are normal. Um, so if you only want to make sure that the reed has a flat table, you take a reed finishing tool, which uh, of course I use the Reed Doctor Pro, um, and do the same thing when shaving, but very lightly. And you just look where the shavings accumulate. For example, in this read, the shavings. Focus this. In this read, the shavings accumulated here and here, not the center. This means that the read was pretty much like this. And with the shaving, we are making the read look this way which is the right way. Now that I did it again, the shavings accumulate evenly in the surface of the product, which means the table is ready to go. For this next step for hand finishing reads, we will use our third most important tool. First is our shaving tool, Second is our pencil, and third is our LED light. Uh, we will put the reed here, and we see if the reed is unbalanced. If left side and right side do not look exactly the same, we need to do some shaving to balance our reed. This reed looks very good. But, if we need to shave something, we just mark exactly the place we need to shave. And then, we just go and do it. The Red Doctor Pro is see-through, so we can look exactly where are we shaving. Now that we did our work, we can see that where I shaved is this place. And the Red looks very good. Now that we have a reed that has a flat table, that is balanced, that is the right strength for us, the last thing to do is actually to seal the reed. How? Let me show you how to correctly seal a reed. I have one proposition to make to the saxophone community and it is the differential sealing. It means that when we seal a reed, we will not seal the entirety of the reed the same way. Why? When we seal a reed and we apply pressure on it, the fibers start to get closer and closer, which makes the reed stiffer. It also makes the reed absorb moisture uh, slower, which is great. Uh, how do we seal the reed? I use the Reductor Pro. We have, uh, when we make it, we make sure that the Reductor Pro has a sealing surface, which is all of this area. And we will seal only the parts marked right here. This will help me to have a stable intonation, stable sound, and reduce squeakiness but not here. We will retain that flexibility for a quicker response. So same way, we just go from back 
to front we can apply as much pressure as we want so this feel this surface feels very smooth and this one feels rougher but this is more flexible than this when when sealing the reed it's important to take in account that you can do it two ways just sealing the marked part here and the table and also you can do it sealing the whole vamp and the whole table i will i will always choose to seal the whole table because of aerodynamics you know when you blow air into your horn the air travels inside the smooth surface of your mouthpiece then it travels inside the smooth surface of your neck and then the smooth surface of the saxophone viewing it that way looking at it that way it makes no sense to have a portion of your reed rough adding resistance that you do not need and have a smooth surface in the rest of your instrument if you are a jazz player you are probably better off sealing only this portion of the vamp and leaving this just as it is why because when you seal a reed microscopically you are consolidating the fibers you are making it thicker adding more density reducing volume it makes the reed less flexible more dense so um, so this way you can add core and center to your sound but still retain the flexibility and brightness leaving this as it is if you are a classical player and you play a mouthpiece like this one for example that has a straight baffle it isn't a rollover it isn't a step baffle you are probably better off sealing the whole vamp and the whole table why because having extra thickness in all the vamp in all the register will make the saxophone sound more even in the older register and also ha add warmth and thickness to the sound uh, but also lose some brightness so of course these are rules these rules are these are not actually rules you can be a jazz player and and be looking for the warmest uh, most focused sound and you may be a classical player looking to add brightness to your sound but for general purposes classical players seal the whole vamp and the table jazz players seal a portion of the vamp and the whole table when the reed is too soft you can do basically three things you can harden it just a little bit by sealing it applying a big force okay with the reductor pro i can do that because this is a glass surface and glass is much harder than wood so this is a way you can make the reed feel a little bit harder but it won't solve the problem as the other two ways the other way is just buy a reed clipper and clip it and the other way is to sand the tip for example with the reductor I can do this and sand the tip as a fingernail and although it is slower it is more precise and you can make the reed feel harder I, I need to tell you this and it is that every method especially the clipping and the sanding uh, they all will uh, modify the proportions of your reed so if you do that and you do not shave the heart or the rails to compensate the reed will not sound the same 
This is a summary of what you can do to hand finish a new reed. First, dry the wood. Put it under the sun. Simple as that. Second, draw on the reed. Use these patterns. They will help you. If the reed is too soft, sand the tip, clip it. If you want to seal the reed, just be aware that you can do it two ways just a portion or the whole berm if you apply more force while sealing the reed the reed will also feel harder i hope this complete guide of reed hand finishing will help you if you're interested in a reed doctor pro just send me an email